Hello and welcome back to Cycle Fab. I'm Larry. In today's video, I have something different. Uh, this is not typically what I do. Uh, every once in a while I get a job like this, okay? I just want to welcome you guys along to watch me do it. Uh, I can't have a video on something and then do something like this separate. So I'm making a video over some of the work that I get in here. What I've got here is a cross ram intake, uh, cross tunnel ram intake, I think is the best way to describe it. This thing's huge. It did not originally look like this when it was new. The guys had this for a few decades. All right, this is apparently left over from either the 60s or early 70s. It has been milled down quite a bit. This deck plate uh, should be about, what, a half inch, three quarter inch thick, five eighths, something like that. Instead, it's an eighth of an inch thick. That's thin. That's way too thin to really mount anything to it safely, in my opinion. He wants me to mount four of these on here, okay? So in order to do that, I need to make adapter plates. So I want to make two of them. Now, this adapter plate is going to be a half inch thick. This is what I'm starting off with. This is a 36 inch length piece of aluminum by six inches in width. What I'm gonna do is basically transfer the holes that are already in here, which there is 28 of them, 14 on each side. These holes have like two and a half threads, all right? Which is the bare minimum for what you would want a screw to be able to hold on to. Uh, Rule of thumb, anyway. Uh, I've got these screws in here. These are the screws I'm going to use. These are quarter 20 by half inch. Now, if you notice here, these are socket head type screws. They're stainless steel 304. These are gonna be sunk into this aluminum. Uh, the heads will be flush, in other words, but it will give me enough to hold on to this plate and secure the adapter plate down to it. Now, these look to be aligned uh, uh, fairly, well, I'm not going to measure them and then find zero on my plate and go over and move and just do it mathematically because I do not trust these, nor am I going to go through and measure each and every one of these holes to see if they're on par to what they should be. Anyway, I just, I'm going to transfer them, okay? I want to do a transfer punch screw punch and it comes in a little container like this. This is actually your holder and wrench to install these things. Uh, some of you may not be familiar with these. I love them. Uh, for some jobs you just cannot do without like this one. And what they are, are just tiny screws with little uh, points on the end of them. So you basically screw them in to these holes here, just like this. Get it started with your fingers, then take your little wrench. That's what it looks like on the end. I don't know if you can see it. It's just a little socket and you screw these bad boys in. Now, the neat thing about these, you can screw them way in there, all right? To where the tip, the point is just above flush with the deck that you're working off of. I'm going to talk as I do this and show you the each individual steps and then the final product with these mounted to this manifold. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and go ahead and hit that notification bell too so you know when my next video is coming out. Now, let's go ahead and get with this. All right, now I've got my aluminum cut and cut to length. I cut this out on a bandsaw first, just to get the majority of it. Uh, here's the excess. Anyway, then after the bandsaw, I took it over to the mill and you know, made them both equal, uh, brought in the length, which is 14 and a half inches. Uh, both pieces are within 10 thousandths of each other, which is more than adequate enough, just as far as the length and the looks. It depends on how concerned you are about the looks, as long as you get these centered where they're supposed to be, the carburetors. But anyway, this is two length as in relation to the plane, the deck right here. Next thing I did is install the screw punches and get them elevated all to the same height. Now, the way I did that is with this. It's just a piece of scrap metal that milled down a hundred thousandths. And it's just a gauge, a height gauge, just like that. So I can get all of these the same. Now, another thing that I did is I put a stop on this end. And what I'm gonna do is just be able to slide the plate up 
get my zero off of this. And even over here on the side, I'll put this, a flat piece, right there like that, and just butt it up. After that, I'll clamp it down. Then go around with a soft mallet and just, you know, lightly hammer some little indentions into it. Anyway, that's the plan. Let's see how it works, okay? So let's get going on this. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just stick this on here. I think it will work out just fine. I put a square on it earlier. Uh, made sure these two plates here and here were the same, or was square, anyway. All right, now, uh, I wanna clamp this down with C-clamps, just like so. Just to keep a little bit of pressure on it, I've got a flat spot on the bottom of this intake right here that these will be able to grab a hold of. Now the idea behind this is I'm gonna go along now and just keep tapping with a soft mallet and just keep tightening these down and we'll see how it works, okay? That's all I can say. That's one reason why I put the layout die on these plates is just for the simple fact, so I can see it. I don't know how deep these indentions are going to go, but let's find out. The amount of pressure that I'm putting on these clamps is not that much. Do not bear down on these. This is cast aluminum, you can crack it. Now I've already went around once and then retighten these down. So I wanna pull this off. Hey, look at there. All right, now I don't know if the camera can pick this up or not. Uh, dimple right there, right here, 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 here. Everywhere it's supposed to be, I've got a dimple. So I want to go ahead and mark this, you know, front, back, top, bottom, that kind of a thing. All right, guys. Well, uh, the first part of this video was the most important part. Anything that has to do with adapter plates uh, as far as one being the most important is the partnership between one screw pattern and another. In other words, uh, the pattern of these carburetors versus the pattern of what I had to deal with on this manifold and the relationship between those two. Now, I was able to match that just fine. That's why I concentrated on that so much to show you guys, you know, how to do that or one way to go about doing that. After that, uh, we ended up with just two basic rectangles like we started with. It just had more holes in it. Now, I'm not going to show you guys me drilling holes and countersinking screws. That takes too much time. It's stupid. It's a waste of time. But what I will show you right here is some of these relief cuts, all right? This has to do with the operation of the carburetor as far as adjusting the accelerator pump. So I cut those relief cuts in there and also some here in the center. And that's so the manipulation of the linkage and everything will have room to work. Now there is going to be a gasket up underneath those carburetors. And uh, that's about a 32nd of an inch, I believe. I'm not real sure on that, but it may be a 16th, maybe more. But uh, that's that to consider. Uh, and all that would do would give it more clearance, which is a good thing. Now, I'm gonna show you the difference between these two plates. Uh, this plate right here, I'll give you a close-up on this. This is me taking it down from rectangle to the, right here, okay, in the rough. In other words, I'm just taking off large chunks here and there that I do not need and putting in the large radiuses. Okay, these, this is the biggest, largest profile of this piece. Now, I did not have to do this. It would have functioned fine in rectangular form. Um, this didn't look appealing, so the customer changed his mind, which I figured he probably would, and went with the contoured look. Now, it takes a lot more time to do that a lot more, especially on a manual mill. So next, uh, this is what it looks like finished, uh, basically. Now, what I did versus this side here is basically just go around and contour radius the edge. Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head what size contour that was, but I 
just something that would flow the best I could get it to flow and match nicely now. He approved it and uh, liked it. I liked it. Uh, it actually does look better than just sitting there in rectangular form. But what I'm trying to emphasize here is if you do have to make an adapter plate, which isn't that hard to do if you're just mating patterns together, uh, if you're not concerned about looks. Like I said, if you want to do the profiling and such, yeah, that takes some time. Now, the profile cuts in there for the clearance cuts for the linkage, that was a necessity. Uh, but still, that didn't really take that long to do. That's just a plunge cut with a ball end mill. Anyway, uh, I appreciate you guys showing up and watching my channel. Uh, I'm up to 6,000 subscribers right now, thanks to all you guys. And uh, thanks for coming back. Please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, share the video. And go ahead and hit that notification bell so you know when my next videos are coming out. If you have any questions about this sit-up or just have more experience than I do, which <laughs> there's a lot of people out there that do, uh, please just uh, write down there in the comments and uh, send me a word and I'll get back with you. I'll try to get back with you. I'm getting a lot of comments nowadays and I do try to answer all of them. So I will catch you guys uh, as soon as I can. Two, three weeks, maybe a little longer, but I doubt that. Anyway, take care. I'll see you all later. Bye now.